All right, kicking it off, uh, just for the basic fundamentals of Hardpoint, what would you guys think is like the most important fundamental to make sure you win the game? Rotation. Absolutely. Perfect. <laughs> yes. No, exactly. <laughs> um, exactly. Just rotate, right? Uh, so we already now know that the first most important thing is freaking rotate. And rotating for some reason is an issue with a lot of people where like for an example, like let's say we're playing a P4 and we want to rotate towards uh, P5, right? So a lot of the times um, people will kind of go in the wrong lanes and they don't actually know what rotating as a team means. So uh, just for an example, obviously like the first guy rotating would be going you know, wide right over here, getting ready to play for 10. And then maybe the second guy would as well follow up uh, 10 and like clear out forklift. What would these other two guys do? Where, where would these guys normally go? I would say probably like tunnel. tunnel right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, right? Like they would push through tunnel, through P1. Um, and it, it's funny because like this is where we start having issues. Where this one player going tunnel, he usually tries to look for other rotators crossing but nine times out of 10, and I see this happen every single time in ranked play, these enemies over here, they just ignore this middle lane and they just all get to new and they flood it, leaving uh, your teammates in like a 2v4, right? Uh, so I would definitely say one important thing as a team is when we say rotate, we are rotating around 30, 20 seconds, and we just need to make sure that we're all with each other for the trades. Now, yeah, yeah, right? Um, now, the reason why is because when we're rotating, like, we're literally just playing for the trades just so we can have control of the hill. Where a lot of the times, this player over here, he would probably go middle, right? So, uh, yeah, quick, yeah, please. The first guy that rotates, does he rotate to get on new and be there to try to keep you know enemies from coming in, or does he just rotate for, and try to hold spawns? So when the first person rotates, um, obviously like for P5, you're rotating through trash can, so you kind of already have spawns, and this player would want to get to like hill, into a power okay. position. Uh, so I think that's like the right thing to say, is rotate for a power position. Thank you for saying that. And then obviously, you know, you want the second guy there just because when you're rotating, you want to make sure you have numbers. Um, third guy should follow up as well. And ideally, you guys are w playing for trades where like as you guys are fighting each other, winning trades, boom, these two players die. They spawn over here. These guys push up. They trade out you. Uh, you probably spawn over here. The game is weird. So this probably spawns your teammate like even further back. And then uh, we win those trades, these guys all die, and now we have one player left in hill. Uh, when I literally say rotate, I literally mean like, yo, let's just all four hold hands, get to new hard point, and win the trades. Because the second that we win trades and we have this player in hill, these enemies have to guess which corner is this guy sitting in. I got that. Uh, right? Um, and now that we rotated, obviously our teammates just need to get to us. And then of course you can now have one player middle to cut the map and cut the spawners off. So again, like the most simplest thing is just when you're rotating, literally just all four of you run as a team to the new hard point, just get to the new hard point. And I wouldn't say really care about the kills because when you get to the hard point, you're soaking up all this time and these enemies have to guess which corner are you in and then that's where your teammates, you know, can then start like flying out if they want to. Okay, so for like yeah. P three and P five. Yes. If you're holding spawns, where, uh, where, how far out can you push out before spawns flip? Right. So typically your AR. So typically it would be something like this, right? Is like all of you guys rotate. The enemies are close. We win kills. We get trades they spawn out and then once they spawn out, this player here is the anchor, right? Because like, let's say it's P3, you wanna make sure you hold P4 side. So this player is gonna push out and sit middle cut because he's gonna block uh, this entire half side of the spawns. 
Like, the enemies can't spawn over here, and that's going to force them to spawn over here. Okay. And I'm glad that you said, uh, like, how do we, like, push out? Um, like, where do you sit for the spawns, and, like, how far can you push out? Because that's actually the next thing. Is like, once you're done rotating, and you just wait for the kills, once you get those kills, now you push out. Um, and when you push out, typically, I would say it's a golden rule to have, like, two teammates push out and two mm -hmm. teammates to stay in hill. So, like, again, this would be your anchor pushing out to get the middle cut. And as he's getting this middle cut, he can call out um, if the enemies are going dark or for the back alley play. And then you would have one sub player push out and, like, he could sit in this corner. And based on the info that he gets from number one, he can play these kills, however. So, like, he'll hear one just hit dark and now one just hit your back alley. And this, obviously, as you guys can see, uh, the route to hit this is longer than this route, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so based on that information, this guy would be like, oh, shoot, okay, fine. Uh, get Peeker's advantage, ego challenge, kill this guy, and then boom, he already pre-fires this third guy. And even if he dies, which nine times out of ten, or sorry, not nine times out of ten, uh, most of the time you do get traded out. Uh, so once this guy dies... Ideally, he's going to be spawning at P4, where when there's 30 seconds left and it's time to rotate for new, voila, he just spawned up. He can just, you know, start playing for a power position at P4, which I'm sure you guys know a lot of people sit in like a corner over here at P6, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, now, the last thing I would say for this player to do right here, though, middle, is obviously he saw all these guys cross. His job is now to push up and then go pinch and help his players at old. Okay. These players in here, they're just waiting because if you have hard point, just, like, wait for the enemies to push you. Don't try to, like, do anything uh, because you guys are going to soak up as much time as possible, and if we all die, we're all spawning new anyways. Okay. Okay, cool. So uh, we literally have that down already. So uh, the first thing that you want to do is you rotate for the power position. Uh, once you're done rotating, you win those kills. Then you can get into a setup or push out. So I'll say uh, pushing out is also like doing a setup. And quite frankly, this is how you control the pacing of a game. It's that simple. You just rotate, get into a setup, get your kills, and then you push out to the next one. And um, this is how pro players are, like, thinking ahead, and this is how they win the game so often. It's just because they already know, hey, it's fine that our player pushed out and dies because he's already going to be rotated for P4. And that's why I was saying, like, hey, it's always good just to have a game plan. You're going to be fine. Um, but now, let's say we had to break. If you're the breaking team, what would you have to do to break? Trying to come yeah. from all angles. Yeah, Barber's hard. Oh, yeah. No, absolutely. Hell, yeah. <laughs> Hell, yeah. No, you got a person on this back heady, truck heady. Yeah, no, it, it's it's a hard one. And this is why, like, you always want to prioritize, like, rotating and setting up. Um, It's because the game is just easier. So when you guys are trying to break right here, I like that you said you got to attack from all angles. And usually what you might have is, like, two players go alley. They clear out this guy. And then two players push up middle. And this at least, you know, spreads the enemy team, right? We're not in a funnel. Uh, so, like, you and your teammate just want to take your time. Take your time. That's the key word or key sentence when you're breaking is take your time. And I'll tell you, in ranked play, no one takes their time breaking. <laughs> Never. Yeah, I see that all the time. Yeah. Um, because, like, again, like, right here, you're already on the, like, bad end where you have to break so you might as well dedicate 20 seconds of clearing out angles together right uh so like these two players would take 20 seconds clear out this guy boom they kill him he's obviously spawning in the back uh you guys would time this challenge together because once you kill this guy this guy's gonna react and you know play for the back and then you can be like okay challenge three two one boom you guys challenge together hopefully you guys win that same thing over here we're throwing stuns throwing grenades. Okay, yo, I'm going to bait for you. I'm flying. Boom, we win that trade. And obviously, I'm saying a lot of like trading, doing this, doing that. And it's because it, it, it requires that much work. Um, and uh, you're right. You got to attack. 
Uh, so now, I guess like a quick, easier way on getting back into this pacing instead of going for the break and just getting all these kills, what do we think we could do? Wouldn't wouldn't you want to send somebody through T to kind of block those spawns right there? Like over here? Yeah. Yeah, 100%. And this would like spawn them out. Uh, I, I believe it would spawn them out over here. Um. You are correct. Yeah. So you like you want to like spread the map and just like work it together, try to figure out where the enemies are and just take your time. And obviously if you lose, the enemies are already rotating, right? And you got to be prepared for that. So uh, one thing I was trying to say is like one way to change the pacing is you just got to rotate early. So rotating early is rotating around like 40, 35 seconds. Um, I would say 35 seconds. 40 is too much. 35 seconds is usually when it's like, damn, there's no way in hell we're going to break barbershop. We might as well just rotate to new. Um, and like that's a team game plan, and that's exactly what you need to do then is just rotate to new. So you would rotate to P5. You get in your setup. So like usually you would have like one person forklift, one person um, helping him and like baiting back here. And then you had one person in time and then one person top 10. Um, at least this is the setup I do because if we know that they're set up over here, they're obviously going to try to rotate in this direction. Mm -hmm. Or come through tunnel for that one. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And um, obviously when we rotate early, the whole point of this is the enemies have to guess where we are. And the only downside is we're losing time, but it, sh it should be like a give and take, right? We're giving them 35 seconds of time, but we're gonna win these gunfights and we're gonna get a full 60. And as you guys can see for like the P5, like once you win all these kills, like number two can push up and then get into that setup that we talked about for P5. Um, works for P3 as well, correct? It does, yeah. It does. Uh, so like, I, I would say like the key thing about this is just making sure we rotate as a team and just like rotate to the power position, rotate to the time and win the kills that way. Because in ranked play, I see it happen all the time where like you have two players working up middle and two players are sitting at new and the enemy team just ignore middle and they just all go back alley and we get 4v2. Really annoying. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. So now, um, how do we make the right play? I'm just gonna show a quick example of pacing where I'm on the bad spawns. I am on the bad spawns over here, yet I'm still able to soak up nearly a full 40 seconds right here. Uh, so what, what happens is um, I literally am just pre-aiming. I literally get a call out, yo, there's one guy uh, pushing top rails right now. So I kill one guy hill, I get a call out top rails, and right now all I'm doing is I'm pre-aiming top rails, pre-aiming top rails. Number six is pre-aiming top rails, I'm pre-aiming top rails. My teammate dies in hill, I get the kill in hill, and now at this point, because I have the hard point, I'm going to wait for the enemies to push towards me. And I literally just wait, and I soak up all this time. And the enemies, they have to make a decision. Do they fight for you know 20 seconds, 30 seconds, or do they just sit for spawns? Um, and like that's like that's the thought process that went through my head right here. Is okay, I'm just gonna wait, I'm gonna hold an angle. Cool, I got a kill, I'm gonna sit on time, and now I'm sitting on time. I sit here, I'm like, oh shoot, we got two of my teammates dead. I'm still just gonna sit on time and wait for them to push me. And the enemy team, they're they're waiting for me to challenge. <laughs> mm -hmm. But yeah, so um, literally all I'm trying to show right here is just me taking my time on the bad sides of hardpoint. And because I took my time on the bad sides of hardpoint, I was able to soak up 30 seconds. And now, if you look at it, we have a good fighting advantage to play for P2. Okay. Cool. All right. So now uh, what we're going to do is 
like how do we make sure we make the right plays and it's kind of like a, a test i guess you could say where um i want you guys to basically give me a number so one through eight what's your number uh dubsy uh three three okay goon what's your number seven seven okay uh, we're going to go with uh, Dubsy first. So, Dubsy, you're number three. I'm going to randomly click at a point. You're going to look at number three, and I want you to decide what is the best play. All right? Okay. All right. So, right here, number three. What should number three do right here? Uh, I would probably just sit there and wait for them to push through gate and top maps. Perfect. Perfect. And... Obviously, this is kind of an easy one. <laughs> yeah, I got lucky there. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, no, look at that. He's just sitting there. Perfect. Um, all right, Goon. So, number seven. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. Boom. Let's see where we at. Um, stay there and keep shooting them as they run across. Absolutely. So... This is a big thing right here. Number seven, Lynx, he already has a kill. He has enemies focused on him. What would you do right here to maximize your play? Hopefully somebody's in, can get the top maps and help me. Okay, yeah, no, I like that, no, for sure. So like, that's like teamwork right there, where you would call out, yo, yo, they're focused on me open. Someone hit maps and get this flank. That is exactly what should happen. Um, but let's say we're playing ranked play. You can't rely on those uh, teammates. So I would say, you know, once you get this one kill, the enemies are focused on you. You can literally just like go for a flank at um, uh, closed right here. And that'll just keep the play alive longer. And that'll continue to spawn them out, right? 100%. Yeah. Is, because isn't that yeah. point's weird, isn't it? Uh, so right here for P3, because number six is aiming at the gate, they can't spawn there. So the enemies right now can only spawn bottom art. Obviously, you're blocking P2, so they can't spawn there. And um, like that's that's what exactly what would happen is they would just be spawning in these two spots back and forth. So what if uh, number six pushed up into like art? Or Good. Like top boat? Right, right. So the second that number six pushes into top maps right here, you are correct. That does open up the gate spawn. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So. Uh, the way I look at this is maybe the right play isn't telling your teammate to push out, and instead it's just you literally yep. run in a circle open, and you just spawn trap in the middle. Yep. Awesome. All right, let's just do it one more time. Uh, Dubsy, uh, can you give me a new number? Five. Five? All right, let's see what number five has to do. Oh, let's just go to a different map. Why not, right? Damn, come on. Number five, where you at? Man, am I just kidding? Oh, sorry. No, you're good. You're All right, good. here we go. Here we go. Okay. Um, if I was number five, I would sit there and wait for my guys to spawn up. And then, because are they going to spawn a uh, kitchen or are they going to spawn in a uh, diner? So your team right is going to spawn a kitchen. Kitchen? Yeah. Okay, I would wait for my team to spawn up and then probably push together. I like that. And what made you decide to just keep the pre-aim instead of, like, pushing up right now? Uh, if you're watching your kill feed, I mean, it's a 2v3. And there's a good chance they have higher ground, so you're not going to get those kills. That's so music to my up. ears. Yes. Yes, absolutely. No, sorry for cutting you off right there. I just, I, it just put a smile on my face. Just because there's a lot of people who don't understand how overpowered the kill feed is. It literally just tells you when to pre-aim and when to push <laughs> like it's exactly. that simple yeah um all right uh goon uh, can you give me a number let's go with number one number one yeah. all right number one i'm right here this is this is damn this one looks kind of tough low-key because i know what um, i did right here <laughs> um if it was me i try to kill number eight and then hold side planners okay and Tell my teammates get in a position. All right, all right, for sure. Uh, a position to break or a position to rotate? To break. Gotcha. I guess there's 26 seconds left, so no, I actually wouldn't then. I'd just turn around and rotate. 
Hey, I'm glad that you picked up on that right away. Uh, so you said that you would rotate. Okay. Uh, where would you rotate towards? From right there, I would probably go top AC. Top AC. Gotcha. Okay, yeah. And if you had an AR, 100%, you go top mm -hmm. AC. You can obviously pick up middle, and you can pick up the left lane. Um, that is exactly what I did here, except for I had a sub. So because I have a submachine gun, I actually play this middle box right here. Because this middle box, I'm able to, you know, get an off angle, get the cross. Uh, but yeah. awesome. Yeah, awesome. Uh, did you guys want to do one more, or did that kind of, like, make sense? That makes sense. Yeah, perfect. So this right here is ideally just, like, to get your, uh, what, what is it? Like, it, it's, a, it's a brain teaser. That's literally it. It's just, it gets your brain warmed up on making the right plays. Um, I'm just going to do one right here. I'm going to be number six. Uh, let's see here. Number six. Number six just is over here. we got 30 seconds until rotations for P7, I think. So for rotations P7, I would probably just push up and sit in a corner over here and mm -hmm. then call out to my team that, yo, I got our middle, I got our back alley, rotate towards me. Um, and then, like, you could press play to see if those players do that, and it looks like I'm wrong. No, this is P7. Yeah. Whatever 6 did, I would not do that. This is P7. Yeah, it is P7. Okay. Weird. Yeah, so somehow 6 spawned up over here with 20 seconds, and now he's at time. <laughs> not sure how that happened. Um, but, again, that's where it's like, you're going to find yourself in these scenarios where you're laying down, you see two dead in your kill feed, and you're like, oh, shoot, what do I do? Um, but, okay, cool. So now the last thing of the class that I wanted to talk about was just how do we be cool, calm, and collected in all of this? And this actually doesn't have much to do with Call of Duty. Um, again, if you had a game plan, that would probably make you a bit more confident, cool, calm, collected. But for the most part... Um, like outside of the game, do you guys know what you guys could do to be cool, calm, and collected? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no problem, no problem. Uh, Dubsy, do you have one? I'm trying to think. Sure. Draw on a brain fart right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, just to stay cool, calm, and collected, like in the moment, like actually mid game, there's one simple tool and that is just make sure you're grounded like literally make sure both of your feet are planted on the floor and breathe through, through your nose i know that sounds weird and like well duh <laughs> um but because people are like communicating a lot they start like just talking 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 and the second that you start breathing through your nose in and out like, you're going to be able to think so much more clear. Um, so, like, d does that make sense? That makes sense. It's yeah. just hard to stay uh, cool, calm, collected with some of the people we play with sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. Uh, so, um, Shane and I were texting each other, like, during and after the match. Like, what's our teammate doing? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, uh, for sure, like, mid-game, I would say just, like, make sure, like, like literally, like, when you die, look down and be like, damn, are both my feet on the floor? Okay, cool. Like, that just takes you out of the moment real quick, and then it throws you back in. And then if you just focus on breathing in through your nose and out through your nose, that's just going to give you a whole nother focus. Um, there are a few other things. Like, me personally, what I do is, like, if I'm, like, losing gunfights like crazy, I look up at my ceiling. And I just take in one deep, big breath through my nose and then out my mouth. And then I'm frying again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, cool. And then uh, just one last thing after the game, right? So you got like a five-minute break, a 10-minute break. Uh, what would you guys do to like reset and just stay cool, calm, collected? We'll get a drink. Perfect. Yeah, no. <laughs> exactly. Same. Go grab something to drink or go to the restroom real quick. There you go. There you go. Awesome. Yeah. So, um, just a few other things that you could do. Uh, I don't know if you guys know Doug Sensor Martin, but to keep cool, calm, and collected, he'll probably do some push-ups or do some pull-ups. 
Um, there are other coping mecha mechanisms that other people use that aren't healthy um, or aren't the healthiest. Let me re rephrase that. Um, and then the last thing I would say is like, <laughs> literally go touch grass. Like imagine getting out of your chair, opening the door, walking outside, touching the grass real quick and coming back in. <laughs> I mean, that'll, uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> that, uh, that usually keeps me grounded. Um, but yeah, no, that's, uh, that's mostly what I wanted to talk about today was just, you know, how can we start training ourselves to make the right play in the right moment? Uh, it's about doing these brain teasers where you can pull up professional gameplay, sit there and be like, okay, boom. All right, number two, this is what I would do. I would just sit here, pre-aim, wait. And then like you could press play and see if that pro player does that or not. And you will learn from that pro player if they do something else, right? And then uh, finally, I just wanted to talk about, obviously, if that play does not work out and you die, here's a few things that you can do to stay cool, calm, and collected, and that's mostly breathing. Uh, breathing is probably the biggest thing that people don't focus on. Um, it's just posture and breathing in and out through the nose. Probably one of the biggest keys uh, to success just because it keeps you in that moment, keeps you in the present. Breathing's hard when you're in a 1v4 on search. Hell yeah. <laughs> 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 no, nah, but I like hearing that. Try that. Try that. Like 1v4, just be like, all right, I'm just going to breathe in and out through my nose. And those nerves are just going to disappear my heart's beating too fast to <laughs> think about breathing half the time <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um but awesome that uh concludes the class uh do you guys have any questions nope no sir all right no problem if you guys do have questions like literally any questions at all even if you send over a clip of you dying like i'm always happy to help uh just because at the end of the day like you know communication is what helps us get better uh, okay. But yeah, other than that, thank you guys so much for showing up. If you guys do have questions, message me, and I'll always be happy to help. That works. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you. I hope you guys have a great weekend.